Greetings, greetings, everyone. Welcome to Heart Center, your show bringing you um, the best you out of time? THL matches. And yes, there was an ad that you heard um, because YouTube is horrible sometimes. But we are live now, and I am joined by just an amazing squad as usual. First of all, he's been here the whole season doing an amazing job. No stairs tonight. Uh, unfortunately, I know y'all wanted to see it. Um, we have Super Chicken. Chicken, how are you doing? Uh, you know, not as great without the stairs, but hanging in there. Yeah, nice. Um, I just want to note to everyone that Super Chicken card, as everyone knows, is the Iron Deep Trog. Very true. I do like Trogs and the Iron Deep Mine. Right? Um, second, we have to my left here, top left. Um, he's in literally every show. I don't know if there's a show right now that he doesn't hang out at least once in a while. Um, you can see him tomorrow on Tavern Talk. You can see him on Thursday bringing you some amazing matches. I think there's a great lineup this week. And his favorite card as everyone knows, right now is a Frost Saber Matriarch. We have Dr. Fish. Oh, man. Matriarch's actually a pretty solid card. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm glad to have you. It's always great having you on the show. Um, also coming tonight from Tavern Talk Land, we have the one and only Geranium Battle whose favorite cards is the Battleground Battlemaster, or however you call the six mana five five win the game card. BGBM, yeah. I make sure to attack twice and I make sure to appear on two different uh content pieces every single week. Uh that's right. It's uh it's win the week. And uh unfortunately you will not find me on any control stream. Nice. Um now, last person here tonight, no one knows who he is or where he's from. He's doing his first stream of the year um, tomorrow, apparently. And I don't know if I'm still sub, but I was sub for him ever since the beginning. Uh, and we have the one and only Ron Mexico, whose favorite card right now in, in Hearthstone is the Warsong Wrangler. Oh, man. Love me some Wrangler. Uh, how's it going, man? Uh, glad to be here again. It's been a little while to uh, right since I've done a, a Hearth Center, but excited to be back. It's a it's an awesome new crew you got, and uh, you're doing a great job hosting. It's a fun show to be a part of, and glad to be here. Oh, I'm so glad to have you, Ron. I mean, you've done so much for the show. I'm just trying to keep the show going, um, have some fun every week. I'm really glad you're joining us, though, because we have a Power week tonight, we're going to do, we have so many segments planned. We're going to go over, um, first, we're going to start with player of the week, as we always do. But that's going to be over fast, because we're going to hop right into our next thing. That's going to be um, Hero Series, and then we're going to do Hero PPR. We're going to follow with Legacy, and then Legacy PPR, and finally, Pro and Pro PPR. We are not going to be doing crossover yet. That is going to start. Our crossover tracking is going to start next week. You're going to be able to see what we're thinking of crossover and who's actually going to make crossover uh, top five. As well as our best guess is, is who's going to be the crossover winner this season. So that's quite a lot for a show. Um, I will keep us moving. As you all know, part of my role here is to make sure we end the show tonight and that I can go to bed at some point and not just have to go directly to work tomorrow. Seems good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, everyone ready to begin? For sure. Yeah. So we're going to start with Player of the Week. And to tell us who is our um, hero Player of the Week, we have Geranium Battle. Uh, Drenny, are you there? Muted. Might be muted. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, okay. Well, uh, 
for the hero player of the week, man, uh, all this um, razzmatazz that uh, is missing now. The hero of the week is Corden. Corden brought the heat this week, putting up a massive sweep to help secure Dad Legend's first victory of the season. It's been a rough stretch for Dad Legend, but Corden took full advantage of his opponent's susceptibility to yellow dart fueled high rolling to get Dad Legend back in the playoff race. Thank you, Esclis. Yeah, congratulations, Corden. I am sad he isn't here to. The first week he gets uh, Player of the Week after writing yeah. Player of the Week basically every week, and mm -hmm. he's not here to hear it live. Hey, there he is. Congrats, Corden. Congrats, Oh, he Corridan. is here. Okay, congrats, oh. Corden. Um, awesome Player of the Week result and a really important result for Death Dead Legend. Uh, but that's not all. To announce our Legacy Player of the Week, we have Super Chicken. Yeah, so our legacy player of the week is Laughing Frog, who took a 3-0 sweep over Jim Philos with the aid of an unconventional mage list featuring Aegwin the Guardian, Roz Frost Whisper, and Lokolar the Ice Lord. Midrange mage was good enough to secure game three, helping your team to a narrow win over the previously undefeated Hoth Zilfs. And thank you, Bone Masher, for the submission. Yeah, I saw that deck. It's not a normal thing. Anyone here played mid-range mage? It's not ping mage, it's just mid-range mage. Oh, you, you tell me you're not jamming mid-range mage on ladder? Come on, man. Uh, I remember like a pseudo mid-range mage in like Forged in the Barrens uh, before Flo got nerfed, I think, mm -hmm. right? That ran Aquin. Mm -hmm. There was that yeah. like kind of tempo-ish mage, so. There was. I assume it's somewhat closely related to that. I didn't get to see the deck myself. It's a bit related to that, yeah. But it's a bit more mid-ranging. Gotcha. Okay. Now, our final player of the week is going to be told by none other than Ron Mexico, who is our pro player of the week. All right. So pro player of the week. Who else could it be but our very own guest and host tonight, Super Chicken Pro Series for the boys versus Poem Locked and Loaded with the week tied 9-9. Nine to nine. The last match would be the ultimate decider to the victor go the spoils. And Super Chicken took a 3-0 win over his opponent, clinching the week for his squad. An important win to stay close in the standings. This keeps for the boys in contest for a playoff position with the weeks dwindling down. Brought to you by Corden. Nice. nice job. Yeah, congrats, Chicken. Aw, oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> Is this your first player of the week? Um, No, I, I got it in pro uh, in season five, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, in a similar situation against a uh, Hype Horizon. I, I think nice. it was very close to Tide or something like that, and I, I got the win over Cool Kid, I think, uh, hmm. to win the week. That's awesome. Um, so, that being said, everyone ready to move into Hero Series? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's do it. Awesome. So, we're going to start looking over Hero Series Teal Conference. And I want to ask my friend Ron Mexico, Ron, what happened in Teal this week? Ooh, well... Teal, we we've got a uh, we've got once again, as many followers of Hero Series have seen over the seasons, who else but no pros here up at the very top, dominating the regular season again. I don't know if you're familiar with this storyline, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> uh, this team, you know, when they get to the playoffs. Things yeah. things don't look so rosy, but you know, in the regular season, oh my god, do not tangle right. with no pros here. Uh, next up, of course, uh, take make a five seed out of a mole hole, just a little bit behind them. I mean, there's kind of a sizable point gap between one and two, but holding strong in second place is mole hole, uh, followed by APM Yang at 74, the unknown Hordy on main, Korak City, and Booty Bay Yacht Club 
all really kind of crunched together in those point totals and records. We've got a lot of three twos and two threes. Um, it's it's a very similar storyline to what we've seen throughout many many hero seasons. Uh, it's a very highly competitive series, and we are not going to see the playoffs get decided anytime soon, unless you're NPH. You made playoffs. Congrats! It's what you do. Everyone else, try to be more like them. <laughs> Win some more <laughs> games, you know. Sure. Uh, but it, it's a log jam right now, so it's it's going to be an exciting race to the finish line as we get later on into the season. For sure. It's really cool to see how, like, there's so many teams that are just next to each other. Usually we don't see that at the bottom. Usually it's more distributed, but everyone's close together this time. Right, Ron? Yeah, I mean, our last place team, um, tied right now between my team and Booty Bay Yacht Club, is still only, uh, what, eight total points out of third place right now. And just yeah. everything's all kind of locked up together. So, I mean, one big week for any team, one bad week for any team, and it flips a lot of fortunes. So uh just goes to show you mm-hmm. that all points matter. I feel like I've heard that, sure. that saying somewhere before, <laughs> yeah, too. Have, yeah, I really <laughs> have. Long series. Long series. Oh, yeah, you're um, right. You're right. My bad. My bad. That's legacy or something. <laughs> or pro, now, I don't know. Speaking of teams that are basically already qualified, um, Fish, why don't you tell us what's going on in Purple Conference? Yeah, so Purple Conference has a similar type of situation where Golden Wisps have even, well, they started the week with oh, about seven more points than no pros here. They started the week with 101 points. They already have eight points this week, but that'll be covered next week potentially. Um, so Golden Wisps far and away ahead of every other team in Purple Conference. They are 5-0. and um, APM Yin and F2L Black sitting at 82 and 79 respectively at Diamond at Diamond. Um, and then we see the drop uh, between the teams. We have 5-0 and then three three twos, and then uh, Dad Legend with one win, uh, LeBron with zero wins but a tie, and then Team at Any Cost sitting at 0-5. So there's definitely a clear divide in purple while Teal doesn't really have that clear divide. Mm-hmm. Now, Fish, stick with me a little bit. I want to take a look at a match from your team. Two teams in the middle of purple. Kind of a really important match. We had F2L Black facing at Diamond at Diamond. What happened there? Tell me your perspective as one of the players in the match. Of course. So this match started off with the top two matches. So Neji played um if you don't know who that person is at the one seed that's eddie mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's eddie. Uh, Seo, yeah seo hyun five six two eight is eddie he subbed in for diamonds team and took a three two over neji boston uh turtle took a three to two over Rabobson. um and then my match was next and i took a three to one over super buckles and then um shubaka versus diamond happened so that went to diamond and Atachi needing a 3-1 or better to either tie the... Yeah, needing like a 3-1 or better to essentially clink, uh, clinch the week. Uh, mm-hmm. Took a 3-2, to two, which means that at, at Diamond's team won the week. So a 3-1 tied, a sweep one. Wow. And did not come away with the, with the weak win, but a lot of good points and a loss. For um, sure. You take it, for sure. Oh, yeah. This is a strong showing by both teams. Um, I want to ask Geranium Battle, any thoughts on F2L Black versus F Diamond at Diamond? Uh, yeah. We saw, um, we saw that uh, Justin was maybe holding the team back. We got Diamond's old Tespa partner, Eddie, uh, coming back to, uh, to really clinch the, this one over Neji Boston in the, in the one. Um, as you, as we could say, uh, Reed Bobson no longer uh, at the top of crossover, but we're not covering crossover this week, are we? Instead, we're we're covering uh, at Diamond. Just getting a uh, a little bit back into it after having a, a very slow start to the season. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. I'm glad to see all these results, including my Tavern Talk co-host <laughs> being five and zero. Oh. Yeah, for sure. Um, anyone wants to share any final thoughts on F2L Black versus at Diamond Squared? 
Oh, I, I got to chime in on this one because I find this really funny that uh, there's just seems to be a lot of backstabbing going on in, in this matchup here. First, you have Neji at 0-4 looking to find his first win of <laughs> the hero season. Yeah. And fellow Canadian Diamond just stabbing oh, and, him right and in the back And legacy teammate, by the way. And bringing legacy in. teammate on top of it. He, <laughs> True. He, and, he messaged and bringing our, in, message in our server. Look who I got. <laughs> yeah. Bringing in, you know, former GM Eddie, uh, who also, I might add, has only subbed in in THL one previous time in the last bunch of seasons. And it was in pro, and it was for none other than Rebobson's team. So we got Eddie stabbing Rebobson in the back, too, <laughs> taking away the victory from F2L. It's just, just a fantastic little uh, storyline twist here. Great job on at Diamond Squared, uh, taking a, a very tight victory. And uh, Neji, you know, sorry, bud. Uh, I'm sure you'll buy that, that victory next week in Hero. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Um. And with that, I'm going to move us to our second match, where Chicken is going to tell us about a very tight match, which is what we're always looking for here in Heart Center. We have Make a Five Seed out of a Moho, barely squeezing by against Hordy on Main. Yeah, another one. Uh, another match decided by one point. Uh, those are always a bit more exciting. Um, the the top seeds in. <laughs> On make a five seed are still terrible. <laughs> we just <laughs> can't seem to win. I don't know. We're just I, I don't I literally have not won a single game. Not like not a match, a game in Hero in like the past three weeks. Um so I really mm. gotta figure my stuff out here. Uh, and then True. you know, Python was definitely taking advantage of that. Um but luckily the the uh, three to five seed who have been carrying this team all season uh, came in clutch again, uh, getting wins. Skirt notably um, beating Agro Elemental Shaman uh, when he was down two one with a uh, with Ramp Druid uh, to come back and then managed to beat Yespin's or Jespin's Demon Hunter in game nice. five, which is pretty crazy. Um, yeah. ABC and and Python got their wins in the in the one and the two. Um and yeah, it was a it was a pretty exciting series overall. Like it was it was pretty back and forth. Um, with mm -hmm. I think myself and CMac playing fairly early on and losing kitten. I think kitten also played fairly early. Um and so we were down by a bit. Mm. I think and then I think nine and skirt came back with wins to to close out the series. Nice. Um, yeah, well, popping in here as the other captain, uh, <laughs> Mr. Python and ABC played like immediately, and then uh, and then it, we just got to watch the losses trickle in here uh, as Bombdi and Jess uh, played uh, on uh, on Sunday and and Bite Size played on Saturday. So it was uh, ending off the week strong for Make a Five Seed out of Molehole and uh, just barely clinching it with the uh, the sweep from. You kidding me? Yeah, that is just such a close match. I will say it seems like everyone's agreed at this point that Rogue Band is the thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I will. <laughs> Anyone has any final thoughts they want to share about make a five seed out of Moho and hoarding on main before we move to our final match of the night? Maybe we'll see uh, some non Rogue Bands next week. Uh, obviously not to speculate this isn't tavern talk that is you know tavern talk yeah. has a has a trademark on that one but we may not see the same result next week maybe yeah uh just to take a page out of our hats book here uh the the funny little statistical mention you can make here is right that uh everyone who banned made or banned rogue won so you know clearly they're onto something here mm -hmm. also uh or sorry everyone who won banned rogue and then everyone who lost banned rogue so you know maybe that's a bad strategy <laughs> Fair. true Fair. um moving on to our next match and to talk about um a great match that happened we are going to have geranium tell us about lebran versus no pros here was this a no pros here wash that a lot of people expected well, yeah, this 
is the thing is uh lebron had uh did not have the best season going into this uh as you can see no pers here started at 4 and 0 and lebron started at 0 and 4 and yet uh they were able to um take what they needed to be a must win and made it a a tie, unfortunately for them, uh, against the top team in the other conference. 14 to 14, that comes off the back of uh, Based Inc. taking a 3 to 1 over Agent PWE. Nails taking a 3 3 1 over Skittles. Astrofrog narrowly losing the 2 3 against your mum kid, TH Lemur. Narrowly losing the 2 3 against Pasca, Roadrunner. Narrowly losing the 2 3 against Clarity. And uh, yeah. Uh, you can see just the strength of uh, of no pros here's uh, three four five uh, carrying them, and then you know uh, the the three four five of LeBron just unluckily uh, uh, you know, mm-hmm. not able to to get any any weeks one here. Yeah. Now, um, I want to ask Chicken, do you have any thoughts on LeBron versus no pros here? Yeah, this is definitely a good look for LeBran. Uh, I think, you know, obviously they, uh, as Geranium mentioned, this was some something of a must win. I, they can obviously still get into playoffs. Um, they they kind of need to have some insane pop-off weeks going forward, but it's definitely a good showing um, mm-hmm. when you've been struggling most of the season and you tie against the first place team. That's I mean, that's really never a bad look. Um, no. I think... I think Nails is starting to kind of get get some momentum in his hero season. He's uh he's been winning a little bit recently, um, and then you know based staying consistent. I think, I mean, it, even though the bottom three seeds lost, they also each got two points, which which is pretty huge. You know, ended up securing them fourteen points, which you know fourteen points in a tie is is pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think LeBran is still is still looking solid going forward. Um, I think, yeah, I think a lot of it lies on their bottom three seeds and how well they can do going forward. <laughs> like I think you, I, I don't think you can expect them to get into playoffs without like Astral For- Frog or uh, Th uh, L- Loomer. Lemur. Oh, Lemur, sorry. Uh, TH Lemur, uh, like, getting a win. <laughs> like, I think they just true. need to start winning. <laughs> and then they, they might be okay. That's true. Um, any final thoughts on Hero Series or on LeBran versus No Pros here before we go into what everyone's here to see, the player power rankings? Ooh, let's go after that PPR. Let's do it. So to tell us what is going on in Hero Series, we have Geranium Battle. So tell me, Geranium, what are the honorable mentions we have this week? Yes, honorable mentions going from bottom up. Uh, The first one is Nine Eyebrows with a a record of four and one. Then MPV. Uh, Next, some... Can you, Ron Mexico? Weird name. Uh, then always lethal, and then the final honorable mention is Trito too. Um, the name has been officially changed to Rocara Mexico after a recent <laughs> win. Um, but okay, maybe that's better pronunciation. And who made top ten this week? Of course. Starting us off, number 10 is Based Inc., also with 4 and 1. Maybe it's a little bit rigged that uh, we're seeing some of these 4 and 1s in, in honorable mentions and yet some more 4 and 1s in the top 10. Come on, guys. But then at 9, of course, another 4 and 1. It's Maddie Ebbs. And then Aquaman 575. At 7th place, we've got ABC. And then finally, we've got uh, Dr. Fish with a 5 and 0. Oh. And then another another four and one with Ree Bobson, and then Skirt Reynolds with a five and zero, oh. Genji with a five and zero, oh. Lupin with a six and zero, oh. and then five, five your mum oh. kid with a five and zero oh above it. Well, Lupin uh, does have uh, technically okay. a six and zero oh right now from yeah, did, did, playing did an extra week, week but, uh, yeah. but had a five and zero oh going into the PPR. Yeah, good chance his rating improves one more time if Ked. Slip somehow. 
I don't even know if it's slip. Maybe a half win, like a three-two, might be enough for Lupin yeah, to climb I to think, the top. I think Lupin. I think Lupin coming into this week was what five and zero with a fifteen and two. I think. Yeah. Because it was a three to two win last night for Lupin over Shu. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. Um. Really strong results in player power rankings. I want to open. Does anyone have any observations? Anything they want to say about Hero Series PPR before we move on to Legacy? Yeah, I mean, Lupin's, uh, Lupin in the five seed is is pretty absurd. I mean, just having two total game losses across five matches is just like almost unheard of mm -hmm. uh, across like at least my time in THL. Um, and it doesn't happen. Yeah, also, I mean, a notable mention is Genji, who's pretty new to THL, at least to my knowledge. I think, is this his first season? Uh, yes, first full season, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I know he played in draft series as well, but um, yeah, first mm. full season, and he's off to an amazing start in the one seed in Hero. Uh, pretty sure. crazy stuff. Um, yeah, mm. I mean, I, I played against him earlier this season, and yeah, he, I mean, his plays are pretty clean, and it's pretty easy to see why he's 5-0. and Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyone yes. else? Uh, Solid looking list here. I mean, obviously, always, always rigged, right? Always rigged. Yeah, I spam. Um, I made sure to spam my rigs. <laughs> and uh, it, we, we always are going to have the little debate, probably, with, hey, hold on, Lupin was five and 0, 15 and two. Why was Lupin number one? But you know, your mom kid, uh, hard to argue at number one. Genji, super impressive season so far. Skirt Reynolds, totally unfair that this guy's as low a seed yeah. as he is. Oh my god. Um, and Dr. Fish coming in strong with a 5-0, yeah. so we got some undefeated still. Also, Always Lethal hanging out at a 4-0 in honorable mention, so watch yeah. for Always Lethal to rise up this list, too. But uh, yeah. just, just a really great start to the season for all these players. Congrats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so far, this is just great results. If you're a 5-0 or 4-1 player, you should be really proud of your season so far. Um, especially if your name is not Rokara Mexico, but that's just true, part of true. life. Yeah. Um, that said, should we hop into gold? Anything else before we hop into gold conference for Legacy Series? Let's do it. Yeah, I uh, just just want to mention that uh, that two of the players that are five and zero right here have moved up seats just because of how well they're doing. Your mom kid is is now a two seed, and Doctor Fish is now a four seed. Uh, oh wow! So. We'll see if they can keep it up. Yeah. Got to crank up the difficulty level. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, moving into Gold Conference, to tell us what is going on in Gold, we have, let me check my notes, the one and only Super Chicken. Chicken, what's going on in Gold? Yeah, I mean, Clownstone Academy, uh, sitting at the top of Gold Conference once again. Uh, you know, not to spoil anything for, uh, coming up, but, you know, another pretty strong showing from them, keeping their 19.6 uh, points per week. And in second, we have Pod People also staying pretty consistent. In third place, we have Defias. Uh, in fourth, we have Fish. In fifth, we have Illidan's Death Knights. Sixth, we have Agent, P, uh, uh, Agent P's Golden Showers. Uh, in seventh, we have Stubbs. And in eighth, we have not Justin. Mm -hmm. Those are some interesting teams. And we get to see a conference that's looking a lot like purple, where you have a ramp. You clearly have teams doing worse and better here. Um, then it's quite different than some of the other conferences that we're going to see tonight. Looks like the Justin curse is in full effect this season because <laughs> Just Win is at the very top of their conference and not Justin having a, a real struggle finding some victories. Uh, it was They were a solid team last season for what I remember. They both were, but this mm -hmm. season, I don't know, the, the Justins, I think they got mad that the other team was not Justin. They, they pulled some <laughs> kind of voodoo uh, hex and now not Justin is... is uh, really struggling here yeah now ron i'm going to give you a chance to talk about thl history here we have pod people facing last year's champions 
Um, Bod Weeble is one of the oldest teams in THL. What happened here? Well, interestingly enough, too, Pod People facing Defias, who've been around for a very long time. Ca- Comp has been uh, yeah. a captain of yes. this team since like forever. Uh, and Pod People uh, have been around also pretty much like nearly going back to the inception of THL. And uh, I think they took a season off either last season or the season before, but they're back in force and they are killing it this season dethroning the reigning champs in this week uh, and we'll start off from the top our hat getting the loss to wild nine uh in the, a one three match wild nine uh, a real up and comer doing really well there uh we got starlax continuing an undefeated season a three and one over classy thug uh, Matt at Arms subbing in and grabbing a, a very crucial victory for his team against previously undefeated Nebkanuk and taking it down in a sweep at that. Uh, talk about a super sub coming in there and clutching for his team. Uh, lastly, the bottom two, we've got the real allure or the real lure, depending <laughs> on how you want to read it. Um, taking that three to one over wicked good and sway bay coming in with a strong five game series win over azima so a lot of back and forths and uh hat happened to post a a very entertaining little um you know (laughs) summary of uh some some interesting fun facts so i i alluded to it in a previous um uh, mention of one of the other ones where he had rogue bands all the way down uh, so I'm just going to mention what Hat uh, wrote here because it, it was fantastic. Uh, banning Rogue was a strong strategy. Everyone who won chose to ban this popular class in advance of the balance changes. Two, the lower PR player won in all five seeds, including some massive differences on both sides of the bracket. And three, banning Rogue may have been overrated. Despite the three balance changes coming to the class Tuesday, everyone who lost this week banned Rogue. Love to see that. Yeah. Um, I want to ask Fun Geranium. Stats. True. Um, Geranium, anything you want to share about pod people versus Defias? Uh, yeah, I mean, having um, having faced uh, Defias plenty in my time, uh, their team is super crazy. Uh, it's it's uh, it's scary to go up against, and um, and to see pod people uh, take this week in a, in a, a sort of commanding fashion. Starlax and Mad at Arms staying undefeated here uh is uh you know a big a big ups to the team here uh Nebkanuk is hard to beat and uh and Matt at Arms made it look super easy this week with a three and oh which is uh which is very very uh impressive and um yeah I mean I'm I I, I think both of these players I'd be sorry both of these teams are, are making playoffs and I hope to see them uh face off again Ooh. Um, anyone has any final thoughts on Pod People versus Defias before we move into our second gold match? Uh, just that the the real lure could also be read as their allure. Yeah. Um, nice. Just, just their allure. The, 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 the real lure. Um, the so real who knows lure. really how, how it's pronounced? It's. I actually got to know this because we interviewed them. It's supposed to be the real lure, like split into like three different words. So, yeah. Oh. It's just difficult to it's just My so many ways better, to pronounce but, it. You know. Mm. I know. Your idea is definitely solid. Yeah, um, I'll challenge uh, I mean, everyone here. Yeah, uh... Oh Sorry, go ahead. Uh, if you have dyslexia, it's gonna be ethereal lore. Uh that's that's yeah. maybe a True. different pronunciation. True. Fair. Um I will challenge everyone to just come up with a different way to call this name throughout the whole season. Why isn't Steffi go. here tonight? Steffi would have been perfect to read this one just because oh. Steffi has the best name reads. Um, mm-hmm. Well, we are seeing Steffi as a host next week. Um, so we're going to have some great reads for sure. Now that I don't need to read them anymore, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> you got someone taking over. It's good. It's good. Um, moving on to our second match, we have a much stronger result here. Fish, tell me about Clownstone Academy versus the Stubs. Yeah, so this match, as you guys see the score, 20-3, to 3, Clownstone Academy getting 
the full sweep, but also I think I, I have looked back in history and seen 20 to nothings, but this is like one of the lowest, one of the most lopsided matches uh, I think I've ever seen and especially been a part of. Um, mm-hmm. I the, ma- the week started off with Corden, uh, Diamond, and Neji all getting wins. I know it was, yeah. So it was 12 to 2 heading into my match. I was able to take a sweep to make it 16 to 2 and then based 3 1 over Blue Jay. Um, and if you know, um, the only person who didn't ban, no, actually, uh, Diamond opted to not ban Rogue in his match. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, there was no Rogue for me to ban in my match. So. Yeah, you see, there's there's uh, eight rogue bands, a very common theme throughout. But yeah. I'm really proud of my I'm really proud of my team for putting up a really good week, and uh, getting getting us like ahead of the pack in gold conference. For sure, that's a super strong showing for Clownstone. Um, Ron, any thoughts on this match here? Uh, not not a whole lot actually. Just um. Stubs are down at the bottom of the standings. Clownstone Academy up at the top of the standings. Um, if you asked to predict how this match would go before it happened, you very likely would have predicted exactly this. Uh, no hate to the Stubs or anything, but Clownstone Academy is playing on a different level right now, and Stubs are kind of struggling to figure it out. Maybe it's the meta, maybe it's some other stuff, maybe the shakeup will kind of help them out a little bit. Mm-hmm. But um, I mean, I've played with a lot of the players on this team too, and they're all solid. Uh, but sometimes yeah. you can collectively have, you know, just a, a rocky season for multiple different reasons, and hopefully they can turn it around. But certainly wasn't going to happen this week against the top team. Top team sure. just showing why they are where they are, and everybody just putting in dominant performances. For sure. Any final thoughts on Gold Conference and the Stubs versus Clownstone? Before we move on to Red Conference. All right. I'll take that as a no. Um, Geranium Battle. I want to ask you, what's going on in Red Conference? Is Just Win back at the top? Uh, Yeah. I mean, it's almost like they never left. Uh, They are the only undefeated team in Red Conference right now. Uh, and there's a lot of closeness in these rankings. At the top, of course, there is uh, Just Win sitting pretty with 89 points. It is the lowest of the uh, of the three tops um, because right behind them is F2L White with 82 points, and then we get to the other F2L uh, with 68, and we have another 68 with Dad Legend and. Then a 66 with Serenite Pain Gang, a, a, another 66 with MUH Hearthstone, and a, a, another 66 <laughs> with Chaos Theory. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, well, yeah, uh, the seventh place team in this uh, conference is two points behind the third place team in this conference. <laughs> it is so tight right now. And then everyone's a winner uh, is in the rear uh, just by definition, but they are. Still, they're only nine points away from being third themselves. Wow. This is a mess. It really looks like this conference, everyone's a winner here. Um, and True. yes, I did have to do that. Um, mm. That's why I am here. But let's straight up hop into the big match that happened for this conference. Before we talk about the teams that are all scrambled there in the middle at 66 or 68 points, um, we had just win versus F2O White, which is definitely one of the most important matches that is going to happen in red this season. And Geranium is going to tell us what happened there. Yeah, uh, the two top teams squared off against each other. Uh, you can see that uh, Just Win is seven points ahead of F2O, and it's these seven points right here. As always, Just In Time took a close 3 2 win over Myanodon. Infinite uh, took a, a close loss to uh, crossover legend Re Bobson. Wild Rose, uh, another win 
three to one over Slod. Pokemon six six one another win three to two this time over Onfall, and then Skirt Reynolds uh, with a um, actually a sweep back. Uh, he was down o two into this and then swept back against Totino's Pizza for a three to two. Uh, just a lot of close sets this uh, this match, uh, mm-hmm. which is why there's a uh, it's four to one record wise, and yet F two O White is still with eleven points. Right. Yeah, even though this is a big win, they all still survived somehow. Um, Fish, tell me a little bit what you think here. Anything you want to share about just win versus F two O White? Um. I think the positives, I mean, obviously F2O White didn't want to lose this match, but the positive is that they're still, oh, that they're still up there. They're still above the rest of the conference with just win, even despite the loss. Um, yes. So I, I think, um, you know, it's a great win for just win. Obviously their bottom three seeds putting on clinics five and four and one for three members is always great skirt sitting at, I thought skirt in the floor was busted in hero. It's it's even worse in legacy at 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 yes. five C. Um, obviously he, skirt didn't play as many, hasn't played as many legacy seasons, so his PR hasn't quite caught up to where it's yeah. supposed to be. Um, but yeah, congratulations to to the Justins. Um, I, it was cool. I, I've gotten to team with wild. I talk, I teamed with Wild Rose in draft series and a fantastic player. So really glad to see them doing well here. Oh yeah. No, this team is doing amazing. Um, anyone wants to share anything else about this match before we hop onto our second red match? Um, yeah, I'll I'll just uh, I'll just mention that Justwin is is comprised of a bunch of different Tespa players, uh, which was the same strat that people may remember from Foolish Mad Men a while mm-hmm. back. Uh, I don't think this is nearly as dominant um, as as you can see. People have more than one loss in their mm-hmm. records right now. But uh, yeah, uh, Tespa players once again proving themselves to be fantastic in THL. Mm-hmm. I mean, Tespa players is just like a, a, a random, you know, side note of, of what's happening here. It's that they're all Justin. It, they just so happen to be in Tespa. Like, hey, is your name Justin? Cool, you're on the team. Oh, you also play in Tespa? Oh, all right, cool. That's great, That's great I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's the good criteria. Plus, there's some solid strategy. Maybe well, one think... day he's going to get the famous Justins in the team. I mean, obviously, I'm sure they met through Tesla. I'm just joking. well. The, there is a bit of a reserve of Justin players that they have. Um, they, <laughs> they also have reserve have... Justins. <laughs> they, there awesome. are res- there's there's a lot of Justins. Um, there's there's more on hand uh, that that could be subbed in at any moment. So. You know, watch watch out for you know maybe a Justin moving in and out of the lineup every now and then. A <laughs> terrifying bench of Justins waiting in the wings. <laughs> that's, that's so great. <laughs> that's so great. Um. So, hopping on to our next match, we have the team I refuse to try to say the name of because I'm going to fail. Versus the other team I don't want to say the name, but I'm going to call the nice Jewish Owl team versus the Pasca team. And to tell us what happened in that match, we have Super Chicken. Chicken, take it away. I was hoping you were going to try to say it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so two pretty evenly matched teams going into this um, uh, in points and in record. uh, Both kind of looking for a win to put themselves higher up in the standings. And MUOH Hearthstone does take it. Uh, We had Owl, Sam Seas, Ghosts, Dragon Ninja and Trito all getting wins for their team, getting them, uh, was it, um, 16 points from that. And then Mojo picked up two, even though he lost. So mm-hmm. giving, uh, MUOH, uh, 21 points, including the weak win, which is pretty huge for them. Um, F2L, despite only winning one match, uh, do still pick up 10 points, uh, because a lot of those losses were three twos and they, the other two were, Three ones. Um, I think the biggest difference maker for MUOH in the past couple of weeks has been uh, the addition of Dragon Ninja in that three seed. Um, he's been 
a pretty solid player in collegiate. Um, I think he I mean, definitely has a winning record and has also, you know, competed in a couple of Masters tours, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, definitely seems to have been a great pickup yeah. for them. And the, I'm not sure if he's played last season. I'm not sure if he's permanently yeah. subbing for the I... team or what the situation is. But, um, I mean, I think if Dragon Ninja stays on the team, they have a pretty good chance of making playoffs. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so he's it's not a perma sub. He's, uh, he's just subbing while uh, there's an unfortunate situation with um, their other player, Tavin. And, uh, and yeah, he was on the, on the team last uh, season and mm -hmm. uh, found his way down to the three seed as well there. So. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So that's quite the showing for MUOH Hearthstone there. Um, I want to ask Ron Mexico anything to say about this match. I mean, I got to mention that, uh, you know, like Owl was saying in the chat, Bruto uh, regularly has hit, you know, rank one legend. And what an impressive victory for Owl. Coming in at one and three and taking it down three to one over Bruto, who was previously undefeated, I might add. That is a really nice win uh, for uh, for Owl there in that one seed. And then the rest of the team just, you know, kind of holding, holding strong there. And uh, Dragon Ninja being a, a great super sub. I, I like this team. I think they have a lot to uh, to play for, and I think they're one to watch out for. They'll probably make some noise in the playoffs. For sure. Yeah. This team, like, not these exact players, but yeah. most of the players on this team, because Dragon Ninja was on the team last season with Tavin, so uh, they were Wallet Warriors, and they got the bye week, I believe, out of Silver last season. So they're definitely a good team with just had a pretty rocky start to the season and looks like they're now hitting their stride they they should probably kick that tavern guy though i agree <laughs> so true. um also though i i just i really like this whole team like torito 2 is a very strong underrated yes. player mojo powell uh the fact that he's struggling right now when he is regularly put up like one loss or you know, mm -hmm. two lost seasons in the five they're doing as well as they are without him having a, mm -hmm. uh, like an insane season. Sam is a player who I've, I've known for a little while who is always improving and, and showing a lot of capability. So uh, this team just one to watch out for. And is it is either F2L or IF2L or whatever it is, but uh, yeah. also strong and will probably be competing for playoffs too. Just a, a solid matchup between two good teams. Mm-hmm. For sure. Awesome. Um, any final thoughts on Red Conference by anyone or before we move into Silver? No. Let's talk Silver. Okay, let's hop on to Silver where the Zilfs took their first loss. We don't have undefeated Zilfs anymore. And to tell us about it, we have Don Day's um, best friend in THL, Ron Mexico. <laughs> I hope he hasn't, uh, you know, still held a grudge for me replacing him I'm on our sure pro team. He hasn't. <laughs> I'm sure he's holding that grudge for a little bit longer. <laughs> um, but you know what? Don Day and his team, they are still holding the top spot despite, you know, taking that first loss of the season, dropping a four and one. Hot Zilfs still very much in your area with 92 points and a four and one record. Uh, just killing it right now followed by the cooler taking the number two spot in a dominating performance that we'll talk about a little bit later. Hearthstone Academy uh, following up at number three in a tie right now with all points matter. Uh, and then we've got Dirty Mike and the Boys, Golden Wisps, The Cult, and Standard THL Degenerates bringing up the bottom half of the conference. And it's still staying reasonably competitive until you get down to the Cult and STD. Uh, STD previously was a championship runner-up. The Cult has had some mm -hmm. strong seasons too. So, uh, I mean, these these teams are still dangerous. There's still a decent amount of time left in the season to turn it around. But uh, especially, you know, down at the bottom, clock is ticking. So uh, we're we're looking at a very likely, you know, Zilfs and Cooler. Uh, playoff teams with their commanding lead they have in the conference right now. Yeah. yeah. 
Anyone knows how many weeks we still have left of THL regular season for four, Legacy? Four, three after this week. Okay, there's, so... Yeah, it's a nine-week Legacy season. There's not a lot of time. If you need to catch up 20 points... Oh, yeah, yeah. like, I mean, for the Cult, maybe there's a, a, a little bit of a window there, but for STD, they would have to go on a crazy tear. I'm talking, like, putting up 20-point weeks almost every week to yeah. have a chance to make playoffs. Yeah, we've seen it happen before. It has happened. But it's happened. going to be tough. Yeah, I think uh I think I can you know what? I've been brought onto the cult and you know I could I'm turning things around. Uh, no, I, <laughs> hey, there I, it I, is. <laughs> I have been I mean, on was it even without Turt we must still skirt. We were in second last uh like five at like week five or something and ended up <laughs> Finishing second in the conference. Yeah, and just just on, never lost and won the title. Yeah, yeah but six. Yeah, <laughs> that's what that's what six extra so, weeks though. It's possible. I I don't. I mean, uh, I think we already have a pretty solid team. I think True. they've just been like I think they were just having a bit of trouble in earlier mm -hmm. weeks, and I think gotcha. We we did just. Uh, wait, actually, don't. Well, we actually are. Are they covering our match? No, we're not. No, they're not. We did just we're win, not. um, and you know. Things are turning around. Watch out for the cult. We're coming Let's for go. you. Let's go. Okay. Fighting words right there. Um, we're going to see how it goes. And I'm sure Fish and Geranium are going to talk a lot about the future of the cult um, starting tomorrow in Tavern Talk. That said, we're going to hop into our first match. And as we said, the Zills are not undefeated anymore. And to tell us about how they're not undefeated and what happened, we have Dr. Fish. All right. So, Hot Zilfs met APM. All points matter. And yes, indeed, they do. As Bone Masher so rightly points out in naming his team, a 16 to 11 match win for them. Uh, obviously, taking a 3 to 2 over Coles. Uh, Cheesy 10 taking a 3 to 1 over Vino Spumoni. Um, However, Donde taking a 3 to 2 over the Chosen Pie. And Chronic taking a 3-2 over 2-star Mako. Um, but we see the sweep down in the 5 seed for our Legacy Player of the Week, Laughing Frog, over Jim Filo. So, um, mm -hmm. solid win for APM. Keeps them, gets them back on track um, to be in the top four for the conference. They were kind of in that middle and ground with D Dirty Mike and the boys, Golden Wisp, prior. So, really good win for them. Sure. Yep. Um, now, yeah. I want to ask Chicken, anything you want to share about Hot Zilfs versus APM? Yeah, it is uh, interesting to see Hot Zilfs drop the week. Um, bit of an uncharacteristic loss for them. Uh, especially, you know, Jim Falos, uh, who was 3-1 and one at the time, getting swept by Laughing Frog. Um, yeah, wouldn't really have expected him to, I mean, any, anyone can lose at any time, right? But, uh, it is pretty surprising to see him not even take a, a single game there. So, you know, cred, huge credit to Laughing Frog for getting that win. And mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, APM showing that they're definitely a contender at the top of the standings as well. For sure. Anyone wants to share any thoughts about the Zilfs versus All Points Matter? Before we move into our second match. I mean, we don't have to talk about the second match. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you're fine in it. You were honestly one of the best ones, probably the best in your team. Well, definitely the best in your team. Mm -hmm. uh, before we hop into uh, whatever Ron's talking about, uh, I will mention that, that Jim Falos uh, usually starts his matches down 0-2. It's just that he usually sweeps uh, it back and has cool. very good mental. Um, oh, gotcha. So, yeah. Uh, in this case, it, it just, uh, Game 3 did not go his way. Mm -hmm. Good. So, moving on to our um, final legacy match of the night, we have the Cooler facing Hearthstone Academy. The match that put the Cooler as the second team in Silver Conference. Um, we have someone who was present in the match, although he wishes not to have been. Ron Mexico, tell us what happened here. Oh, this was a rough one. Um, 
you know, HSA, we've been having a pretty solid season so far. Uh, the only other loss previously was to Pod People, who, of course, as we mentioned, is doing a great job at the top of the conference in gold. Um, but uh, the Cooler, just a really strong team. Uh, they showed up and and beat us up. Um, you know, we've got uh, in the one seed, it was close. CBX one. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Uh, beat Hockey Boys in a five game series. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, the next, I actually was the final match to be played. Uh, so I saw, you know, uh, superhero take down Charup three zero. Uh, Bremen took the three one over Big Ted. And then Snipe Hunter took a 3-1 over Chewbacca. And, you know, the hits just kept on coming. So by the time it rolled around to my match, uh, it was 16-4 to uh, wow. or something like that. Or uh, <laughs> I don't know if that plus three for winning the week is already added in. So it was either 13-4 to or, uh, either 13 to four or 16-4 to four, uh, when, when my match started. But either way, it's like, okay, so <laughs> this one's already over. Um, I just did my best to try to get yeah, as many points as possible for my team. Uh, I wound up doubling our total, which, you know, we we take those. Good. Yeah. Uh, and Icer played great. We had a very close back and forth series. Um, and I, I took it down in five when it, it kind of just like lined up that the um, the archetypes uh, made it so that I, I had a favorable matchup in game five and it just kind of played out the way that it typically does uh, percentage wise. But um mm -hmm. Yeah, the rest of us, I don't know, we were a little bit unfocused, maybe. Uh, nerfs coming soon and trying to figure out, you know, what was coming. Uh, we were a little disjointed. And uh, maybe maybe we had all been collectively staying up too late. Uh, <laughs> That's fair. But uh, I think more on that, I'll just give a whole lot of credit to the cooler. You know, it's it's just a really, really good team. Um, True. They're obviously right up there at the top of Silver Conference now. And I think they're definitely going to be playoff contenders uh hsa is going to try to have a bounce back week next week and the cooler uh they're going to try to keep that cold streak going yeah. i want to say hot hey streak yo. but you know cool kind of kind of anti to their their team philosophy so we'll call it a cold streak True. um geranium anything you want to add about the cooler versus hsa it's a cool streak and they say colder. I'll go up now. Wait till you get older. <laughs> nice. <laughs> True. Nice. Um, anyone wants to add anything else about the Cooler versus HSA or Silver Conference in general before we go into legacy player power rankings? I mean, I don't know if anyone can top that all-star comment by Geranium, so we should just move on. <laughs> yeah, we should. All right. So we have legacy power rankings and legacy is our i believe it is still the biggest series in terms of number of players so who are the 10 best players um in legacy right now ron tell us who's around all right so we've got legacy ppr starting off with the honorable mentions it is skirt reynolds Four and one, Chewbacca at four and one, Coles four and one, is that at four and one, and Desharmo at four and one. Very strong seasons all the way around. Uh, I mean, look at these these game scores too on some of these players. Thirteen and five from Desharmo and Chewbacca, just absolutely dominant. But a uh, really impressive season so far. That's super impressive. Just congratulations to all the players in the honorable mentions and our top 10 who are. All right. Top 10, starting from the 10th place spot. We have Bremen at four and one, obviously at three and two. Are you kidding me? You kidding me with this? <laughs> Avi, how are you on this list? This is so rigged. I'm four and one. I'm not on this list. Get out of here, Avi. All right, moving on. Uh, number eight, we have Starlax, four and oh. You kidding me? Number eight, he's undefeated. All right, let's let's keep going. Neb Kanak, four and one. Earl, four and one. Darkseid, four and one. And then we got some undefeateds. Here we go. Diamond at five and O. Oh. Chronic at five and O. Oh. Snipe Hunter at four and one. And Base Inc. topping the list with a five and O oh and a fifteen and four game score. Uh, 
you know, the the hero ones, they didn't seem too bad. The legacy ones, I don't know. There's there's a lot of rigged stuff going on here. I yeah, take issue with a lot weird. of this. <laughs> yeah, this is the yeah. PPR I love and know. <laughs> yes, for sure. For sure. Super rigged. Spam those rigs. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um it's uh, but it, I mean in seriousness though, like it's not like any of these players don't belong in the list. They're all exceptional players having great seasons. With the exception of Avi, get out of here, Avi. <laughs> True. True. Yeah. Um So anyone wants to share any final thoughts on player power rankings for legacy before we take our quick Twitch break? I I'd like to thank Diamond and Base for carrying me in Legacy. That is all. Sure. Solid. <laughs> That's good. Um, so I will bring us back um, to the main screen in a moment. I just want to ask you all, um, everyone's ready for our little commercial? We have the original commercial reader here to tell us um, how you can support THL. So, Ron, are you ready? Oh man, I'm out of practice, but uh, let's let's do this. Awesome, go for it. Hey there, Twitch viewers. If you've subscribed to Team Hearth League yet, then make today the day to be a league yourself and subscribe to our channel. This subscription enables the THL team to help cover their various cops operating our website as well as improve the quality of our streams and content to our viewers. If you have Amazon Prime or Twitch Prime, you can actually subscribe to this channel for free. Subscribers go to THL Emote Comes with a lovely THL chat badge, so hit that heart button and keep the notifications on to make sure you catch our team broadcasting live. We appreciate each and every one of you. Special note to our viewers, check out THL's other social media points of interest, our website, teamheartleague.com. Follow us on Twitter at THL underscore HS. Join us on Discord team Red league check out the thl pow podcast for power rankings for all series wherever you find your podcast not a lie they're back now the true hearth legends himself continues to post all of our videos on our youtube channel mr legend saku himself just search for team hearth league to catch everything previously recorded you're of course watching us on our twitch channel twitch.tv slash team hearth league or possibly on our youtube channel in the future and for all you thl fanatics out there there are thl shows every single most days of the week you can't go wrong tuning in at any time for some amazing Hearthstone related content. Now back to the good part. Awesome. So thank you, Ron, for the amazing read as usual. Um, reminder everyone, subs are welcome and you help support uh, the channel. That said, let's hop on to our last series and the second to last conference before I get too exhausted and can't work tomorrow morning. So solid. Quickly, quickly. <laughs> We're going to hop on to Pro Series. We're going to start by looking at the Black Conference. And to tell us what happened in Black this week, we have Geranium Battle. Yes. Once again, Black is stack. And uh, we can see that by looking at oh, a team at the top of the conference that maybe people didn't expect avenging. Prophet Murabi is the top of the conference. Clowns Reloaded, uh, which is the team that everyone uh, sort of thought was was going to uh, stay up there, uh, just hasn't played as many weeks, and so is one point below them at eighty one. Everyone's a winner. The uh, uh, you know wouldn't oh man why am I forgetting the copy cost every time? Uh, all the people in pro would uh, would would quake in their boots if all the wild oh, be uh, out of players a job. came over, and here they are. Yep, be out of a job before yeah. the wild people came over, and here they are at 78 points. F2L with 77 right behind them. Faction still sticking in there with 62 points. Taggers, uh, everyone in pro would be in a job if uh, the best players in wild came over because taggers are at 60. Mr. Smite side at 50 points. Nankrix multiple wives, and Sheepies a little bit behind there with 41 and 33. Uh, a very extremely competitive uh, top four there, and then um, and then some uh, and then some movement around there in the uh, in the five six seven. But uh, yeah, very much looking forward to see who is going to be top next week. Yeah, it's interesting to see here in Black Conference because we have quite a clear divide between four teams and the rest right now. And I know we need to look more at points per week than anything else. Um, that's why we have Clowns Reloaded as still the best team, because they have 20 points per week, which is still completely insane. 
Um, but I think there's still a lot of game to happen in this conference. And I believe the first match that we're going to talk about black is exactly going to point that out. So I want to call Ron Mexico to tell us about the brushy tuna runaway Donde and his Mr. Smite side team facing against avenging prophet Murabi. Absolutely. So, uh, I mean, what a week for Mr. Smite side. They were having a little bit of a rough start to the season and avenging prophet Murabi currently has the highest total points in black conference. Um, but they had a rude awakening going up against mm-hmm. Mr. Smite side with Donde taking the three to two victory over Sabretooth 20. Uh, Interval taking a three to two victory over Reverb and the top two going to Mr. Smite side. Uh, things turned around a little bit for APM with ABC taking a three to one victory over Boozasaurus. But the bottom two went right back Smite side's way with Clark Hellscream taking the three to one victory over Magnificent. And Bone Masher, uh, Super Sub Captain himself, coming in in the five seed, but uh, unable to get it done against Vino Spamoti, who takes that 3-0 sweep. Uh, just, a, just a really crucial performance from Mr. Smite side. You know, um, it's, it's not that long of a season. So when you start off a little bit... Uh, you know, with an uphill battle, you need weeks like this to to put yourself into that conversation and mm-hmm. smite side doing everything they needed to do to uh, try to work their way into the playoff picture. For sure. Um, I want to ask Super Chicken here. Do you have any thoughts, anything you want to share about this match? Yeah, um, I think it's more just as uh, in terms of Mr. Smite side's playoff chances as a whole. Um, them, along with all the other bottom four teams, have had their bye week so far. Uh, and notably, F2L Faction and Everyone's a Winner have not. And actually, APM is not as well. So I think there is... I mean, I, seeing this week, there there's definitely a lot of room for them to move up in the standings. Um, they are going to have some competition, uh, you know, against the other kind of middle-of-the-pack teams fighting for those last couple mm-hmm. playoff spots. But, I mean, this is a really good look for Mr. Smite side, taking down the number one team in the conference. Um, for sure. in terms of Not in terms of points per week, but in terms of overall points. For um, sure. And, yeah, I mean, for everyone except for Boozasaurus getting a win is pretty huge. Um, playing against, I mean, uh, ABC is, is definitely quite a tough opponent. Um, so, you know. Definitely no shame in losing there. Uh, but yeah, the rest of the team getting wins is really huge for them. For sure. I just want to remind you all that Sabretooth was undefeated. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so was Reverb. Yeah. A really strong showing by Mr. Smite side here. Um, any final comments on this match before we move to Faction versus Staggers? Yeah, uh, I would just like to remind you all that um, Sabretooth banned Priest uh, yeah. this series. That is all. And he did not bring Rogue. Yeah, Sabretooth honestly kind of regularly hasn't been bringing Rogue, uh, and it's been paying off for him. But I think possibly he wound up getting a little bit too predictable because um, if I'm not mistaken, he did lose in every series he played last week and he was very consistently bringing hunter paladin shaman in every single series uh, and it looked like donde and some of his other opponents exploited that yeah mm-hmm. so uh you know it's just one of those things about thl it is open list and there's a record of everything that you bring so uh at some point if if you start getting a little bit too predictable you can get targeted and it might be time to mix things up Granted, there's a meta shakeup, so who knows what's about to happen. Yeah, yes. for sure. Yeah. Now, I want to bring us to our next match. Um, the final match we're going to talk about from Black Conference, and Geranium is going to tell us about Faction versus Staggers. Yes, uh, Faction being uh, a little bit ahead of Taggers on points, uh, 
mainly because they have an extra week over them. Uh, but in this case, taking the loss this week to the Wild Players Tigers. Unlimited power super subbing in for the one and winning against Rice Bowl in a 3-2 to two victory. Bandit Keith uh, taking a 2-3 to three loss to Battle Tiger. Foggy 8 uh, somehow in the 3 still. Uh, taking a 3-2 to two win over Seth for Christ. Then Lasagna taking a 3-1 to one win over Mighty, of all people. And Otters taking a 3-2 to two win over Flying Kraken, their captain. Uh, yeah, a, a lot of um, what I would say, like, uh, if I were to think of these players playing against each other, uh, a lot of what I would say would be up, upsets. Uh, I mean, Mighty uh, is... I believe a GM now, uh, so yeah, and then uh, and then Foggy Eight, uh, I remember a few seasons ago was undefeated uh, in pro. So uh, just a a lot of uh, of really close matches and a lot of very strong players makes sense. True. Yeah, a um, common theme for pro series. You know, we we're littered with. GMs and unbelievably yeah. strong players just every single season. It's a, it's a minefield out here. Yeah. Yeah, there are... I mean, there's so many good players uh, that I did not even realize Mighty was playing in pro. Uh, <laughs> I also... <laughs> I also I, admittedly, I, like, I, I look at my own conference a bit more uh, than Black Conference, but yeah, it is insane. Like A lot of these players just kind of get lost in the mix um yeah like <laughs> i can't i i'm surprised that i missed that but it it is it does kind of just go to show that there's just like oh like a random gm on this roster oh yeah yeah completely didn't even notice it <laughs> <laughs> yeah the rosters in pro are getting ridiculous at this point um mm -hmm. now fish anything you want to add about faction versus staggers is a uh, someone who knows a lot of wild players so yeah um no, I'm happy to see these guys getting a win. Um, Rice Bowl, Seth. I'm not sure if was if any of the other three are doing um, what's Tespa now, but I know Rice Bowl and Seth are both doing Tespa, so they they have. And Seth has played multiple s seasons in Hero, so he has a good grasp on standard. It's it's nice to see, um, nice to see them get a good win. Um, yeah, and they're they're staying alive. They're at two and two, they're the top. They're the top team besides clowns with four matches. So it's good True. to see for them. Yeah, their PPR is actually not that bad right now. They seem to be really close to F two L, and everyone's a winner. Mm -hmm. Um, with that, I think it's time for us to go into pink conference. Everyone ready? Sweet. So. Chicken, since it is your conference and you just said you know your conference better, tell me what's going on in Pink Conference. Yeah, so in first place, we have Swagoy moving up to the top at 74 points, UNA at 73, Rushy Tuna right behind both of them at 72. Then we have No Pros here at 67, For the Boys at 65. Wait, this can't be right. There's another no pros here <laughs> at 61 <laughs> points. Uh, and then we have Make Love Not Warcraft at 60. Popeye Spicy Chicken Sandwich at 55. And Poem Locked and Loaded rounding out the bottom at 45. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the those top three teams are I incredibly close in points. Um, bit of a, a, weak, uh, a weak disparity there. Uh, Brushy Tuna has had their bye week, and then the top two teams have not. Um, mm -hmm. So that's definitely something to consider, um, but overall, it's it, it is quite a tight race. Aside from you know maybe Poem Lock is it is a bit too far behind at this point. You you might say, but mm -hmm. uh, I'd say pretty much any of the other teams could make a, a run for playoffs. Mm -hmm. Now we have two great matches that we're bringing here, and I think both of them have very unexpected results here in the middle. So. I'm going to keep us moving into our first pink match. We have EU greater than an A versus Popeye's Spicy Chicken Sandwich. Um, Ron, why don't you tell us what happened here? 
Well, uh, EU greater than NA taking the 17 to 11 victory with solid performances from Always Lethal in a five game series over. Hey, look, it's another GM, Lambie series, uh, <laughs> handing him his first loss in the one seed. Uh, Mikas taking a three to two victory over Always Just in Time in the two. Um, Mick subbing in. Uh, Maybe regularly subbing in. I'm not sure who's in that yeah, spot he's... instead, or, or would have been. But uh, Mick having a hard time so far uh, as a sub, and Honest Zabe taking the three to one victory in the three. Bruto though coming back at it to kind of lock up the week for EU with three to one over Myanadon, and then Why the Hunter with three to two win over Mister Beluga. And uh, I mean, I don't know. Is is this finally the end of Popeye's spicy chicken sandwiches. It's it, it's still early to call, I know, but this was mm-hmm. the team that was basically up at the top of Pink Conference. Somehow they've always been in Pink, but they've been at the top of Pink Conference for like every single season uh, for so long, and then they were maybe hanging out at like number two, number three, but here they all are all the way down at the bottom. EU just uh just having a really strong week here and and climbing up to the top. Popeye's I don't know, they got to turn it around fast or they're going to find themselves missing playoffs for the first time. True. Um, would be a shock yeah. since we're so used to facing Popeyes um, in the right whenever we start playoffs. That's, mm-hmm. I think we had that quite a few seasons now, right, Ron? Oh, yeah. I, I'm, so Brushy Tuna, of course, uh, has made uh, playoffs in back-to-back seasons and has immediately played Popeyes in back-to-back seasons <laughs> and uh, both teams taking, you know, a win apiece. Yeah. Um, someone said something and I interrupted though. I'm sorry. I think it was Germania. Yes, it was. Uh, just wanted to quickly say that Popeyes uh, has 13.7 uh, or almost 13.8 points per week, which is only one point per week behind Sugoi, the top team in their conference. So true. Uh, I don't think they're out of it at all. True. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I just like to overreact to early things. <laughs> they're one, two and one. I'm sure there's, there's hey, plenty of time. That's what the to, show's uh, all about. Make things up. Oh yeah. Yeah. But, but give me a week one where a team loses in like, you know, uh, a 14 to 13 and I'll be like, Oh, are they washed now? <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're here for. Um, now, I want to ask Super Chicken, any thoughts on this match? Anything else you want to share that we haven't talked so far? Yeah, I'm scared to play Always Lethal this week. Uh, take, taking down GM Lambie series, uh, pretty huge deal. I mean, this mm-hmm. is his fir- first loss of the season, and Always Lethal himself is already 4-1. and one, So uh, mm-hmm. I definitely have my work cut out for me this week. For sure. So I'll keep us moving to our final match of the night. And I will note that if you want to hear about speculation about this week's matches, um, Fish and Geranium, and I believe JR as well, Mm -hmm. are going to be bringing you some hot takes, really, um, really hot takes tomorrow, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Golding. (laughs) Yeah, we have to make up up for missing last week with some super hot takes tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, just just go all out. Like I'm, I'm saying, okay. like just just call we're sweeps. Call, we're calling every sweep week already. Single match. <laughs> we're pulling. We're pulling sweep week for final week. Let's do it. Uh, just do. I mean, just do the same Ron did and suggest a double show. Send to do a double show. That's not no. going to be work at all. Double show is fine. That can't, that can't work. For You're us. welcome for that. <laughs> um. So our final match, we have the battle of the pros. We have no pros here versus no pros here. And the person who's going to get the tough job of trying to separate these two is Super Chicken. Tell me what happened. Yeah, I mean, uh, a fairly close match, but, you know, no pros here was able to take it. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) uh, But, you know, no pros here did make it close. Uh, You know, Valdis uh, falling for Kaz in the the one there. Two to three. Uh Heatshot taking it over X Kume. Ufrik uh falling to your mom kid. Uh Agent PWE 
taking a clean sweep over C-Mac, and Avi getting his first win in pro over Jay Rich 3-2. to two. So yeah, I mean, you could say that no pros here are fair, somewhat uh, evenly matched with no pros here. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, no pros here did get a bit of an edge in, in the series with uh, your mom kid and uh, your mom kid and Agent PWE's pretty uh, decisive series, especially. For sure. Uh, yeah, I think Agent PWE uh, didn't have a great start to the season in general. You know, the reigning crossover champion. Uh, I think most people expected him to have a bit of a better record at, at this point in the season, but he is he is definitely turning it around uh, in this series, like in pro and in other series. So good to see him getting more wins on the board. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, the, Jermaine's uh, happened last time in pro as well is that uh, AGP PWE was, uh, was sort of sticking around the middle of his pack and then the rest of his pro team is what carried him to uh, the finals. I think even he would say that. Um, mm. But yeah, I mean, here, no pros here. Very clearly showing it to be better than no pros here. You can see that they have six more points total than uh, their competitors. Whereas no pros here is also very clearly better than no pros here um, with four points ahead of them on the week. Uh, you know, I think it's just a... Uh, Real battle of branding, and no pros here is winning. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't agree more there. I, I just love that it somehow happened in the same season that we not only have F2L and F2L, but no pros here and no pros here. Yeah, and they're all in the same conference for both of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Um, it's called trying to mess up the casters. And yeah, I'm sure. sure this really sounds like an Avi Heat Shock special. So, yeah, it, um, yeah, it sounds like an Avi special for sure. <laughs> it's yeah. funny because they they're Posca they're Poscaing Posca's team. Of course, Posca not the captain of the pro team. That's Pee Wee, but they, you know, it's all in P it's all like in the same house. <laughs> Thought that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Now. Everyone ready to see the player power rankings for Pro Series? Very ready. Awesome. So to tell us the player power rankings for Pro, we have Dr. Fish here. Fish, here's my question to you. Who is our Pro Top 10? All right. So we're going to start off with our honorable mentions. For our honorable mentions, we have Memnark at four and one. We have Lambie series at three and one. We have some some five seed German Shep guy uh, three and one as an HM. We have Reverb four and one, and E Jimmy at three and zero. Oh. So that's that's a good win record at at a nine and two. Yeah, I mean, isn't it crazy that we have a GM? And one of the best players in history in Pro Series, as honorable mentions. And we still haven't gotten to the top 10. Yeah. Um, who actually made the top 10, Fish? All right, so the top 10, we can start off with some guy named Donde. <laughs> uh, Donde, 3-1, and one, is in the number 10 spot. Number 9 spot, we've got Sabretooth, 20 at 4-1. Number eight, we have Jess Spine. So Jess coming in at four and one. Number seven, the return of No Glocko. He is four and one and sitting in the seventh spot. Number four is Nails at four and oh. Number five is our co host Super Chicken sitting at four and oh. So he barely squeaking out above Nails. Um, number, or yeah, number five. Number four is always lethal, four and one. Number three, we have ABC. At four and one, uh, also, and then we have number two. We have Pasqua at a uh, four and zero oh with a twelve and two record, and then number one we have Glee return of Glee to THL at five and zero. Oh. So big ups to all of these players. Yeah, doing it, being undefeated in pro series is nothing to scoff at. 
No, definitely not. I want to congratulate every single one of these pro players and as well as the honorable mentions. And this is just pro is always crazy. This is it's getting crazy each season because there are more GMs now than ever before. And yeah. I'm sure next season is going to have even more GMs than ever before and so forth. Anyone has any final thoughts on player power rankings they want to share before we move on to our checkout screen? Man, I'm just hyped to see number five play number four in pro this week. Yes. It's exciting. Right? Chicken and ale. Also, uh, it's that's a that's a terrifying win right there up at number two, Pascoa at twelve and two. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is just completely Bonds, nuts. That's two Yeah, that's two uh two sweeps. <laughs> Maybe three. I don't actually know. Yeah, Pro- it does kind of put into I could perspective how dominant the clowns are, really. Like it, it's not just like that they're Pasco is winning every match, is that he's uh, like he's sweeping or three wedding every match. It's like it's not mm-hmm. even close. Yeah. Yeah. So For moving sure. us back to our final screen, um, I want to take this moment to first thank you all for being here with me. It's always great having you. Um we have a lot of fun on Heart Center, and I'm sure it's because you all make it so entertaining. And I want to thank our viewers as well. As we move into our checkout question of the night. So I want to ask impressions about the current patch. So the patch changed a lot of things. There's just a lot of new stuff happened in Hearthstone this week. Um, I want to ask, what have you tried? What are you excited for? Tell me one thing about Hearthstone that pops out to you. And I'm going to start by thanking one of the hosts for Tavern Talk tomorrow, Geranium Battle. One more time, thank you so much for being here. Um, tell me, Geranium, what is a new meta impression? There's new, it doesn't need to be standard meta, but a new Hearthstone impression, something that's caught on to you this week. Um, yeah, uh, with, uh, with, in regards to Hearthstone, uh, one of the things that's really uh, caught a fire for me is um, now watching Dog Dog videos again. He's uh, he's playing Battlegrounds. Uh, I'm I'm paying attention to Battlegrounds. That's 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 my that's my Hearthstone resolution. <laughs> nice. Are you excited for buddies? Oh yeah, yeah. It's a uh, it's actually almost like an entire new game mode. There's so much new content for it. Uh, it's like they they basically just added a hero power to every single hero that already existed. Like it's it's crazy. True. And one more time, thank you so much for joining us tonight, Geranium. Always great having you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for for letting me be on the show. It's uh it's always a pleasure. Uh, I was able to be on here, uh, once before and um. Yeah, uh, with with Lotus Knight running the helm, it is uh, it is all looking up. Massive improvement. I agree. Oh, I'm sure that's not true. Um, but I want to thank a lot our other Tavern Talk host, um, the one and only omnipresent stream op and caster here, Doctor Fish. Fish, thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, First of all, any feel free to make any announcements you want to make about shows or matches or etc. But I want to ask you, what are you thinking about Hearthstone? Tell me one thing that's popping out to you. Um, I'm pretty excited to see some of the classes that were perhaps a bit bogged down by Rogue on Ladder, getting to see some getting to be able to play some more diverse classes potentially on ladder. Um sure. I'm a big fan of Shaman, and I think that that Shaman's going to be in a pretty decent spot after this, so I'm excited to play around with with various decks from the Shaman class. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I'm excited for some Shaman, and Fish, just while I have you, is um, everything ready for Tavern Talk tomorrow? And more importantly, what matches do we have on Thursday right now? So Thursday did have a match, but that match had to get moved back. 
Um, so Thursday is currently open with um eight eight o'clock in, nine o'clock. If we uh two generally just gonna do two matches for the season, mm-hmm. especially because I opt while and out before. But um, fair. Yeah, if you have a match at either eight or nine, and then if you have and if we get a nine o'clock match, then it's between if you have a ten o'clock match as well, like we can do nine and ten or eight and nine. But either way, you know, awesome. um, if you go to the THL Discord. Um, you can tag me in the stream match requests if you want to, if you have a match on Thursday you want to play, um, or you can just, uh, hit, or you can just send me a, a direct message on discord and we can get that set up. Um, in Tavern Talk, we still have room for guests. So if you want to come on Tavern Talk and, and, uh, and be a guest on the show, um, you can message myself or Geranium or JR and we'll hopefully, uh, be able to get you on the show. That's awesome. Everyone Talk is a fun show, so if you like making crazy predictions, yeah, go for it. You're going to have fun with these guys. Um, that said, that isn't everyone who was here tonight. I want to give a special thanks to Super Chicken for joining me every show um, so far and for having a lot of fun. It's been it's always great having you, and I want to ask you, Chicken. Any special thoughts that come out to you when thinking about the new patch? Yeah, always a pleasure. Um, I I haven't played too much since the patch, but my my guess is that the the meta will be I'd say fairly balanced going forward. I think, mm-hmm. um, at least uh, what I can think of, there aren't too many decks, or there isn't really a deck that doesn't have a lot of counters to it. Um, or is like super oppressive in the meta game. Uh, I am a you know I'm somewhat wary about priest kind of coming up into back into the meta. Uh, I really hope that doesn't happen. But I have heard some some people are going to be trying out some some interesting priest decks over the next mm-hmm. few days. So I I really hope that I hope, really hope those. Uh, practices uh, kind of crash and burn, and priest is never seen again. But yeah. uh, I, I do, I do think priest like may actually have a spot in the meta game going forward. I will say there's one priest deck I hate more than any other deck in Hearthstone, and I hate it more than I hate Rogue. But there's no, there was no reason to nerf it yet, and that's Miracle Priest. I just dread the deck, so I just hope you're not talking about that. Yeah, I hate Miracle Priest. It's like, it feels the worst to play against, by far. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure Ron, as a avid Priest player, can agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh-huh. Last but not least, Ron, thank you so much for coming back to Heart Center. I hope you had fun joining us here. I hope this was... A um, not too rusty, but just a fun return to a show you enjoy so much and you've been for so long. Tell me, what are you excited? Tell me one thing about one thought that came to you from the current patch. Absolutely. Well, it was great. Um, I think you're doing a great job taking over on the show, too. And it's it's a pleasure to be here with all you guys. Um, As far as the, uh, the meta is concerned with, you know, the patch coming out. Uh, I'm just, I'm just saying. I don't think Rogue is gonna be that much better to play against. I'm just, I'm just saying. Like, yeah, okay, it slows down a little bit, right? That's good. That's good. But it is still seriously busted. Yeah. Like, if I told you prior to this expansion coming out at all that they printed an eight mana card that was scabs, I'm pretty sure you'd be saying that needs to be nerfed. Yes. Uh, yeah. You know they. They still have cloaks. They're just a little bit more expensive. Um, that hopefully will push Poison Rogue a little bit more out of the meta because that deck is toxic as hell. Um, yeah. But, you know, Knoll's dropping down a little bit. That five health breakpoint is really irritating. I was hoping for it to go down to four. A three five is better, but, uh, and it costing more mana is better. But uh, honestly, you know, Rogue is still going to be. Uh, all over the place. Very likely it won't be as insane of a presence that it is right now, which is very good for a healthier meta. 
But if you think this is something that kills Rogue, uh, you need to you need to take a long second look at this because uh, Rogue is is still going to be quite strong, I think. Um, and I'm pretty excited uh, and hoping for some kind of mini set coming out fairly soon, because because that would be cool. Uh, yeah, you know, every, we yeah. like seeing you know a little bit more shakeups, and um, that's that's something that's probably on the horizon in the very near future, right? Should be. I... I hope that's on the hype horizon very soon. Um, that said, though, I will note that a mini set would be a, could be a lot of fun. Maybe they're going to print some things that synergize with different rogue archetypes. Um, <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good. Just one more poison or maybe a, a consistent web to tutor for rogue would be Gosh, pretty good. Please, no. Additional discounts, maybe. Yeah. Let's get some more Octobot back in the meta. We haven't been seeing enough Octobot lately. Yeah, uh, our, but I, also like just a reminder. Stay out of play. Garrot yeah. Rogue like oh, well, still actually it, Octo- exists, and nobody's been playing it. But uh oh. I'll say it. Octobot was unjustly nerfed. I'm pretty sure the card that was supposed to be nerfed was Scabs, and they nerfed Octobot because Garrot Rogue was the only deck being played at the time. Or it was the only rogue deck being played at the time. And now Garot Rogue will probably never come back ever. Which I'm sure a lot of people are happy about. But I'm oh, just that's saying, pretty good. I, I'm just saying, I think uh, Garot Rogue did receive a little bit too much hate. Uh, I don't and... know, I think that might come right back, honestly. Because yeah. the other archetypes just got nerfed. Uh, and Garot Rogue like kind of kind of sort of got nerfed because it runs scabs too because if you're rogue you always run it but well, uh yeah it could it could be on its way right back in with the other ones getting the hits one thing that actually may have nerfed garot rogue and like literally just this patch is that um apparently the tradable interaction with the bleeds has just changed where now if you trade with bleeds in deck like with only bleeds in deck you only draw one bleed before oh. redrawing your tradable card Ooh. I didn't know uh, that. So that nice. Yeah, I believe that interaction has just changed this patch. So uh, if you're worried about Garot Rogue, maybe stop worrying. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just been uh, in That is a big change. Again. That is a big change, yeah. Yeah. Well, with that, I'm going to move to close our show. One more time, I want to thank Dr. Feast, Geranium Battle, Super Chicken, Run Mexico, and you, our viewer, for being here tonight with us. I had a lot of fun as always. Um, I'm sure I speak in the name of all of us when we thank you for watching. We were all just having fun here talking about some matches that happened. Join, uh, tune in to Tavern Talk tomorrow where Fish and Geranium will go over some of the predictions of what is going to happen this week. And watch Wild and Out if you want to know about Wild series because we don't talk about Wild anymore in this show. And you can also see matches on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want to play on stream, just go on the Twitch, on the Discord, and message there. We're happy to have matches of all skill levels. Oh, I almost forgot. I have a match to promote. Uh, Sunday, 9 p.m. Hero. I am playing against Genji on stream. Nice. Oh, nice. That's a fire match. Um, So keep an eye out for that and much more. Coming live really soon. We'll see you all later, and have a good night. Good night, everybody. Bye, everybody. Good night. Well, as you can see,